Hey everyone, so I have already explained to you about uh, urea cycle reactions. There are five reactions in urea cycle, so all those reactions and what are the important point about those reactions, I have already explained to you and you can watch that video in the link that is appearing in the right upper corner right now. Now let me explain you how the urea cycle is regulated, which is the major enzyme in the regulation of urea cycle. So the first reaction, very first reaction in urea cycle, which is catalyzed by enzyme called CPS1 and that is carbamyl phosphate synthase 1. So this carbamyl phosphate synthase 1 enzyme, it is going to condense bicarbonate with ammonium ion to make carbamyl phosphate. As you can see here, so the bicarbonate which has got carbon and oxygen here and also the ammonium ion which is carrying nitrogen. So they both are condensed to make carbamyl phosphate. So the nitrogen part is here, then the bicarbonate carbon is here, oxygen is here and phosphate basically it is coming from two ATPs. So as you can see, two ATPs are converted to two ADP plus only one PI. It means another PI, it will be attached here. So this is the phosphate coming from ATP. Now the carbamyl phosphate formation with carbamyl phosphate synthetase 1 reaction is referred as rate limiting and regulated step in urea cycle. This is the step in urea cycle which is most regulated one. Now who is going to regulate urea cycle? So the regulation of urea cycle at CPS1 enzyme it will be done by a molecule called N-acetyl glutamate which we call it as NAG and N-acetyl glutamate that's an allosteric regulation otherwise urea cycle regulation it is done as a feed forward mechanism so because urea cycle is the disposal pathway so it as with any disposal pathways availability of the substrate itself will induce urea cycle enzymes so whenever there is accumulation of ammonium ion or whenever there is too many amino acids are available it means these are the amino acids that need to be degraded so urea cycle enzymes will be induced so when you are going to see induction of urea cycle enzymes so induction of urea cycle enzymes can be seen in positive nitrogen balance that like means when whenever person is uh, taking too much of proteins beyond the body capacity to use them or if someone is in prolonged fasting condition during that time also there can be induction of urea cycle enzyme so substrate availability itself is a regulation of urea cycle which we refer it as feed forward mechanism anyway so the allosteric regulation it will be done on carbamyl phosphate synthetase 1 enzyme so let me tell you how exactly the positive allosteric modulator on CPS1 is synthesized. Now the positive allosteric modulator of CPS1 is NAG and that is NAG. NAG is acting as a positive modulator and how this NAG is synthesized that is N-acetyl glutamate is synthesized. So it will be coming from acetyl-CoA, acetyl-CoA molecule, acetyl-CoA it combines with glutamate acetyl coa combines with glutamate to synthesize n acetyl glutamate n acetyl glutamate and this n acetyl glutamate is the one that i have written as nag nag okay now the enzyme that is synthesizing n acetyl glutamate it is called as nag synthase or n acetyl glutamate synthase N-acetyl glutamate synthase is the one which will condense acetyl-CoA with glutamate to make N-acetyl glutamate. Now furthermore, whenever there is uh, more levels, I means increased levels of arginine available in the matrix of mitochondria or in the cytoplasm, during that time, the excess arginine itself will act as a positive modulator on N-acetyl glutamate enzyme. So arginine itself will act as a positive modulator on N-acetyl glutamate synthase thereby N-acetyl glutamate synthase is going to condense acetyl-CoA with glutamate to make N-acetyl glutamate 
and that N-acetyl glutamate will act as a positive modulator on CPS1. It means when this CPS1 is active, whenever there is more acetyl CoA available, and that means whenever person is in fasting condition, fatty acid oxidation going on, and beta oxidation is giving you acetyl CoA. When the acetyl CoA builds up, there is more acetyl CoA in the mitochondrial matrix. When there is too much of amino acids are undergoing degradation, so during that time glutamate is increased. So excess availability of glutamate, excess availability of acetyl CoA. And also excess availability of arginine indicates that protein need to be degraded. So during that time, all three of them will have an effect on N-acetyl glutamate synthase, especially arginine having a positive modulation on N-acetyl glutamate synthase. It means there will be synthesis of N-acetyl glutamate and that N-acetyl glutamate will have a positive effect on very first enzyme in urea cycle and that is CPS1. So what CPS1 does? is going to condense bicarbonate with ammonium ion to make carbamyl phosphate. This is carbamyl phosphate. Let me write the name here. So once you make carbamyl phosphate, so carbamyl phosphate will condense with ornithin to make citrulline. Citrulline will move out of mitochondria and it will get into other reactions in urea cycle. So, that urea cycle reactions I have already told you, so I have a video on that. Okay. Now this is the allosteric modulation. Previously I told you induction. So whenever person is maintaining himself or herself in prolonged fasting condition or if uh, high protein intake is taken, so it means there is simply there are too many, so too much substrate is available for urea cycle. So urea cycle enzymes will be induced. So Urea cycle enzymes, all five enzymes can be induced at high substrate availability under fasting condition and also whenever these amino acids, acetyl-CoA, glutamate levels increases in the mitochondrial matrix, all three of them will increase synthesis of n glutamate so that that will act as a positive modulator on CPS1. So this is the main control on urea cycle enzyme thereby urea cycle enzymes can be induced thereby urea can be synthesized in the liver and then it will be secreted and then it will be filtered by the kidney and it will appear in the urine so this is what is all about regulation of urea cycle thanks for watching